What is happening currently, of course, with our counties, they're seeking a municipal bond. Uh, that should be also at the, the NSC as well. This is uh, just an alternative financing as far as, you know, the county's uh, tax re revenue collection is concerned. And uh, the, the, the death of uh, many is that they're not really getting as far as running all the counties is concerned. I'm holding court this morning with Dr. Jim McPhee, who is a lecturer, school lecturer at Strathmore Business School, also the chairman of Sassini PLC. We do have with us Geoffrey Odundo, who is the CEO of Nairobi Securities Exchange. We do have also the CEO of Kenya Association of Manufacturers. We have also Stanley Manduku, who is an advocate of the High Court and also an expert on oil and gas. We have also the chair of the Kenya School of Government and uh, <clears throat> the, a lecturer at University of Nairobi Business School. Also, we do have with us the chairman of Radio Africa and also the vice chair of World, Federation, World Chambers of Federation. Uh, this is Kiprono Kitoni. Let's continue the con conversation of pace, briefly wind up on it, then we go to the taxes and uh, levies as it is right now. But uh, before we took a short break, I'd raise the question about the, uh, the counties. And we said uh, also we shall look at this particular headline in the Business Daily today. Kenya upgrades Kisumu oil rail truck, uh, deems SGR. And we know the turnout about also Uganda with the SGR, how we were looking eagerly for Uganda to, to make sure that at least also they put all, they keep part of the bargain as far as SGR is concerned. But why do you think this has been slow off the mark? They should have actually begun with this particular process in the beginning, Dr. McPhee. Did we uh, leave it with you or I've lost my sequence right now? <laughs> I, I think it was with Jeffrey, but it, I it is. take over. He's <laughs> passed to me in the break, in fact. Oh, okay. You know, one of the things that we, I think, don't really think about is, you know, let's, let, let's for example, put in an SGR. Yes. Now, what are the consequences? You know, and we've got to think very, very carefully about all the consequences of that. Because, for example, the SGR, let's suppose that all the, uh, the containers coming to Nairobi at the moment, okay, and then it'll go on to Naivasha soon, uh, those containers, we have an inland port. What's going to happen to the port of Mombasa? You know, we had Mombasa people protesting. Why? Because, well, uh, you know, there's no business now for them down there in Mombasa. So if those uh, containers come up full of goods to Nairobi, uh, they then have to travel back empty to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. So KTDA, for example, they decided, well, look, let's try to transport our tea on the SGR. Yes. The only problem is you go to Nairobi, there's a huge traffic jam in the inland port there. You get, you get your tea onto a container, it goes to Meditini. From there, it has to go to a, a warehouse in Mombasa. And KTDA found that it cost them 75% more to do that than simply to carry it down by lorry. The lorry now ha will probably come back because, well, you know, the SGR rules have actually been, you know, softened a little bit. So, you know, now, did we really think about all of these consequences when we spent this incredible amount of money on the SGR? Now, you know, for example, if we're talking now about putting a six-lane highway mm -hmm. from Nairobi to Mombasa, what's going to be the effect on the SGR? You know, mm -hmm. because the idea is to try to make it easier to travel by road from Nairobi to Mombasa. Very good idea. But, you know, we've spent this 325 billion shillings building the SGR. What's going to be the effect on that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, well, it was so important that, you know, goods could be put on a train in Kampala and taken right to Mombasa without any transfer of containers and so on. Mm -hmm. If that is not possible, we then start making road transport, which, let's face it, in the United States today, if, you, you're, if you're taking goods, goods are imported from China through Los Angeles, and they're taken on huge trains right across the United States. Yes. That's a long distance. It makes sense to take it by train. But all the other stuff is taken by road. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, what's happening? Goods from Uganda are tra travel more by road exports from Uganda. And they've got to, you've got to remember, Uganda this year will produce 305,000 tons of coffee, which mm -hmm. they export. 305,000 tons, mm -hmm. as opposed to the 40,000 tons that we're producing today in Kenya. Right. So, 
you know, I, I feel that, well, we've got to see how we get that SGR right to Kampala so that a train, you can put a container onto a train in Kampala Thank you. and it can go right to Mombasa. Right. Maybe I should also pick up on uh, Felix Wakiaga on this because uh, there has been hue and cry, especially with the turnaround of the, the, turnaround of the containers, you know, that time um, to make sure that the pile yeah, yeah. is, is actually put on the conveyor belt, so to speak. And uh, I don't know this particular index uh, they normally have uh, from the logistics. Is it? Uh, the, 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 the average dwell time? Uh -huh. or which one? Yes. Yes, because can, that yeah. has been increasing. Um, the last I checked, I think it was at about 10 or 11 days. Mm -hmm. And the free storage period is less than the average dwell time, meaning that you have to incur demerit charges for the days above the free storage period. Mm -hmm. And it's no fault of the importer. Uh, when, when, when that uh, gets beyond the free yes, storage yes. period. But anyway, back to the railway. What was the idea behind the railway was to see how we bring down the cost of uh, transportation for Mombasa. We reduce the number of trucks on the road at that time, and we have a more efficient way of transporting goods. However, we need to take stock about whether that has been realized with the way SGR is currently being implemented. Because for manufacturers, we've seen the cost of a container rising from about 800 US dollars for a 20 foot container to about 1,400 US dollars. <laughs> so that has actually led to an increase in cost. And that's because the last mile costs still have to be borne by the manufacturer, where before the transport would take the goods all the way to the factory. <laughs> so the cost and also the additional logistical challenges at ICD, uh, where goods are not um, able to get out quick enough, and also the issue of all cargo is being put on the SGR. So the choice uh, of the importer to decide where their cargo goes yes. is, is also a concern. And in some cases, we're that's, having... That's the real point, yeah? Yeah. Mombasa people. Exactly. Yes, we're having even Mombasa yeah. Yeah. cargo that's being brought issue. to Nairobi, and we have to write and say Correct. this cargo needed to have been offloaded in Mombasa. So I think, for me, what the message is, is we need to think end-to-end -end when we're executing anything as a country. <laughs> All the way from project design, because what you've talked about when we have the railway, the road, another railway, how do we think holistically as a country when we are designing any infrastructural projects? And when we are executing, how do we execute end to end? So that by the time you're implementing the project, it is as seamless as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's the gap I see. Uh, and the meter gauge railway could easily have been upgraded. Mm -hmm. That was the, because what we wanted was affordable transport, quick transport. So the meter gate railway was already an existing infrastructure. You should and it have had even it. the last mile connectivity issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that could have been an easier upgrade and would have probably cost us much less. As right, it was a fight so, between yeah. the so, so Chinese. So the index I was really <coughs> talking about is a world container index. Mm -hmm. And the listing of Kenya there is yes. really dropping, dropping by the day. Uh, we have the pileups uh, of containers, you know, at the port of Mombasa. And this is creating, you know, such a, uh, a bottleneck. Uh, so the, the the system itself and the ICD here also uh, is really congested. So they are saying in terms of a turnaround and clearance of these containers is costing businessmen lots of money. I don't know, uh, Kipro Kutoni, if you can weigh in uh, on this briefly yeah. before we go to taxes. Okay, I just want to talk about the SGR and about the rail, the rail transport yes. uh, infrastructure in Kenya. Um, I, and I want to ask three fundamental questions. One is on the SGR. I mean, um, the conversation that's going on now between is it SGR or is it meter gauge? I honestly, for the life of me, I get very baffled because I think this is a conversation that should have been happened before the investment in the SGR. Yes. Because I, I, it almost looks foolhardy that you, we are now moving our conversation to the upgrade of the yeah. meter, of gauge. meter gauge railway. Um, having said that, uh, we also need to still interrogate the cost of that SGR. I mean, obviously, it's after the fact, but then I think it's also good to interrogate it for the purposes of it not occurring again. Um, I know for a fact because I have uh, researched the cost of deploying rail systems uh, globally and the average cost per kilometer is $2 million uh -huh. per kilometer. So if you give or take, uh, the SDR today has managed to make its way to Naivasha. Yes. So uh, give or take, that should have cost maybe seven, uh, uh, if it was 700 kilometers, uh -huh. it should be in the region of $1.4 billion. But we do know that the SDR in Kenya has cost $3.2 billion. And actually, we know also that the government of Uganda has been hesitant to uh, deploy SGR if the benchmark costs are what Kenya has been able to deliver. It doesn't make any economic sense for them. Mm -hmm. So the cost uh, is a big problem because that is a, a burden that not just rests with us, but it rests with our uh, subsequent generations. And then the third thing, and I think very fundamentally, is um, I have been in conversation with business people in Mombasa. Um, and as a country, we really need to look before any substantial investment is made are the impact. We need to have a policy impact assessment. 
we need to see what a, a shift in the way that we are doing things um, affects other ecosystems uh, economically. And uh, to back to Mr. Uh, Professor McPhee's point, in America they have a mix of, of um, transport solutions for their cargo across the United States of America. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, we have a mix of energy solutions. Um, our energy grid today has about five uh, energy sources. We have wind, we have solar, we have geothermal, we have thermal, uh, we have solar. Uh, I don't see why we cannot have a mix of both. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that speaks to the whole point of the right to choose. I think it, you, it's very fundamentally wrong um, for government to say that you must use one form of transport as opposed to another. I think the people must be given the chance to choose and those ch that choice should right. be dependent on forces of supply and demand. Okay, so let me clarify something before you go to taxes. Yes. Because we are actually missing the point here, in my view. The SGR, and I'm really for support to do the upgrade what we have. It was a fight between Chinese and, 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 and Japan. Japan was very clear we can upgrade the current from Mombasa up to Kisumu. The meter gauge. Really. Yes. What made the SGR expensive is the large compensation. That's what made it expensive. Because keep gets keep has an acre of land. We tell him keep, we'll pay you fifty. But this piece of land is five m. So we pay him ten, we pop him a second. That's what makes the SGR expensive. And I am happy that but, we are not going to compensate anybody. But the question would be, where, where are these railways, uh, the meter gauge railway, actually snaking their way through? We will never, we are not going to compensate somebody from Naivasha to Kisumu. So that's a plus. The cost is actually 3.8. Second, I want to make clear, and I think people have confused this, Mombasa, Naivasha will never be Mombasa. Mombasa is a wet port. Dry port. Na, no, Naivasha Mombasa is a wet port. Naivasha is a dry, is a dry port. Yes. Yeah. There is no other big ship will anchor Landed in Naivasha. <laughs> Not at all. And that is a misnomer. The problem in Mombasa is what Kip have said. Give opportunity to people to use what means they want. Now, the point McPhee was making, and I think we need to look back. How do we make our economies grow? How do we increase our productivity? So that the, 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 these products and goods are going back to the port. But People matters Naivasha is actually also mm -hmm. an industrial town because of the ease of energy we have there. Mm -hmm. So Joe says that Naivasha is taking Mombasa. It can. There's no other Panama ship to ever. But, 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 but the industrial park in Naivasha is not really up and running as it is. No, no. Yeah? I, mean, I think one of the things you need to... That, that is still a mirage that we are, we are following. So we, we do not know also what will be the, we, the return it's on good investment. It's good to have a vision. Always. Always. <laughs> 30, in 35 years, we'll be first one. They made it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I can tell you in the next 10 years, look this space in Naivasha. Right. Maybe before we just wind up uh, with uh, Stanley Manduku, uh, the pronouncement from the government that people are not too honed to use the SGR in terms of, you know, transmitting the cargo. Uh, and that, uh, you know, will be affected now they are departing from that particular directive. But on the ground, people are, not, uh, are saying right. this is not being affected. Right. So we have a double-faced government who come, you know, uh, give us a PR exercise on, 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 uh, on camera. But now when it comes to affecting this particular directive or <coughs> policies, it, it, that is a different kettle of fish altogether. What will be yeah. your view? Then we wind up on that. We go to Yeah, taxes. I think one of the biggest challenges that we have is, is I don't know whether we we'll call, we'll call it confusion in policy making or a situation whereby the right hand does not really know what the left hand is, is, is really doing. But indeed, obviously, there are quite a number of challenges. But again, when you look at it, I believe that um, uh, a feasibility study must have been done. I, I may not have the facts. And uh, this aspect of socioeconomic uh, uh, impact assessment, yes. uh, I don't know whether it was ever handled when, when that was coming up. Initially, the reports we had is that uh, the SGR was supposed to be uh, running from Mombasa all the way to, to, to Kisumu, but it looks like something happened in between, and that is not what is going to happen. One of the things is that uh, in view of the fact that we have this infrastructure, what is it that we are supposed to do so as to minimize the mm -hmm. impact of this infrastructure to the local economies? Mm -hmm. For me, I would have preferred a situation whereby, one, it is true, let give business an opportunity to choose, because business, it's clear, they're here to make money. Money is about managing your costs and increasing your profitability. But what about government? Government is supposed to change. The, the main, it, it's meant to be a transformative. It's supposed to be an instrument of change and improving uh, social, the social welfare of the people. Mm -hmm. And when it comes this way, you realize that infrastructure is a key driver eh, of social change. Mm -hmm. 
And one of the biggest challenges that you're having is that every moment we start to justify the cost of an infrastructure within the parameters of business, we go wrong. Government is not a profit entity. It's not a profit-making entity. Business is. Now, the moment you say, I will not do a road from Nairobi to Mandera, because economic viability, the moment we start justifying everything on the basis of economic viability, we lose the point. The moment you say that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put a road between Nairobi to Mandera mm -hmm. because there's no agricultural activity, the, 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 the road will not be able, it's not economically viable, then obviously that will mean that that area will never be opened up. Mm -hmm. The moment you say that I'm not going to connect electricity to this rural woman here because he's not able to pay uh, via, uh, is not is going to be viable for him to pay the cost of that electricity. You are not developing that particular process because you are you know there is a kid there who will need to study and who will need that one bulb. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that the cost of putting that electricity to that particular po point, yes, I mean will not have any economic justification. I think once we have got that backdrop, then we see now how are we going to marry government policy and the purpose of government with business interests. Now, you, now you, you evaluate with the potential of the praise. I think it's a chicken and egg. I, I can give you an example. We did that. We watched it. We said, do we do a road from uh, Isenia to Go? Or do we do schools? And with the wisdom, I was working for the World Bank then. With the wisdom, why MEF and World Bank, we say, let's do a road. Entrepreneurs will do all that business. Mm. Yeah. And I think what you're looking here, and you're and right, I agree And that's what I'm coming to, to say that create the infrastructure make an enabling environment and let business do the job you understand do the standard gauge make your mathematics right yeah because even in uh, naivasha there are opportunities that have developed thank you now that now that you have removed certain opportunities from mombasa you know this aspect of inertia resisting to change we have been having we have been doing this 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 now that you have removed business from mombasa that business has gone to naivasha which business what do we do the, the, business. Okay, what, what I'm saying, the Which business when you're talking the, about the, the, the transport, uh, the, the freight business, yes. we are talking about the, the CFS business, yes. there are quite a number of businesses that are related. The reason why Mombasa was complaining, it was saying that there is an economic impact. Thank you. We need to you understand. Yes. So what we need to do is that for business to see what other opportunities can be done. take it offline with within. it. Within. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, someone is saying, uh, Prof uh, is lying. This is a Philip Mbithi Kiswi. Uh, Prof is lying. Cost of land is only 10%. Of the total cost of SGR, <laughs> <It's a strong laughs> I'm <word>. lying. <laughs> At 600 million shillings per kilometer, land accounts for 60 million shillings only. SGR was an, an absolute ripoff of the taxpayer. No, no. So I, I, you I, want I, to defend I, yourself? I think you might want to the wrong room. Yes. And our figures, your figure, you start all the even uh, boy. Uh, briefly, briefly. Yeah, I think the, the, the land was more expensive than the 10 percent of it. That is that correct? What he's saying it's, it's like it should be 10 percent of that, but the actual here was over 80%, the compensation. The sad thing is, those people who are compensated, they needed cash. They didn't want anything else. Now they are broke. Now they are, they are now in slums. But I think his point, I think the point that the, the person is making, mm -hmm. ideally it should be 10%. All right. But Nebal, we pushed it. Nebal, I'm not against compensation, but we are up against countries like Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia today is displaying infrastructure at a faster rate than we are. Here we are having conversations about compensation, how much we are getting, and etc. Of course, people have a right to be paid for what they, what they, they surrender to government. Right. But is that happening in Ethiopia? And we are competing for the same. Thank you. The, the, the problem is our land tenure. The, 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 the right. problem is our land tenure. Yeah. 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 Let's hear from Geoffrey. Let's, let's hear from Geoffrey. We should not lose the fact that we are really a blessed country. I mean, we have a port. We have a, what do you call a dry port now. Absolutely. And then we have a lake. Why aren't we optimizing and, and coming up with a yeah. clear yeah. strategy of actually optimizing on these resources? Yeah. I mean, the, I'm really delighted to see what's going on in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. very transformative, mm -hmm. just to create that port mm -hmm. and allow goods to move across the lake. I mean, if you go to Singapore, you see the kind of number of Things ships yeah. right at the harbor, over <laughs> thousands, yeah. because of the logistic connect, the ease of actually cost of movement, the ease of accessing the ports. The cetera. turnaround. Mm -hmm. we, the turnaround of those things. And uh, agreeing that the 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 entry point and how we, we make and take advantage of the hinterland is so important. Mm -hmm. And allowing people to have options of choosing how they want to move their goods. I think that's a very fundamental Absolutely. discussion Absolutely. we need to have. Absolutely. Right.